Okay, something a little different this morning. For one, I'm doing the video with my iPod mini rather than my iPod touch. I hope the results are satisfying. Um, what I'm going to be doing is playing out scenario 10 of Roads to Gettysburg 2. Now, what is scenario 10? Well, scenario 10 is the entire campaign of Gettysburg and it's using the advanced rules. Now, I'm not a very experienced with the advanced rules, but I'm going to give them a try. Why am I doing that? Why am I playing the Gettysburg campaign? Well, one, I've always been interested in the campaign, but lately I've been reading two books, and I've read lots of books on the Gettysburg campaign, but I'm being influenced by two books that I'm reading right now simultaneously, audio books actually. Spies, Scouts, and Secrets in the Gettysburg Campaign by Thomas J. Ryan. And uh, the subtitle is How the Critical Role of Intelligence Impacted the Outcome of Lee's Invasion of the North. And I'm finding it fascinating reading. The footnotes themselves in the book are a goldmine of information. The other book I'm reading at the same time is Gettysburg, The Last Invasion by Alan C. Gualzo. And this author gives me lots of little highlights and scenarios and anecdotes that I had not read before about the Gettysburg campaign. And I'm finding it uh, a fascinating read. So this video, if I decide to post it, uh, would be in several parts because it's going to take me a long time to play out this campaign. What I'll do is do a brief introduction on the setup and... I'll have to do the video in segments of probably one day uh, for each segment, not um, show the movement of every single unit on the board. That would make the, the video ridiculously long because as anybody who's played this knows that each turn there's multiple phases and uh, there's a lot of counters in this game. So we'll do a, a summary every turn. The game starts on June 22nd, and uh, I don't know how successful this experiment will be. If I think it's half decent and we can learn something from it, I'll post it. If not, um, I'll just keep this for my own records. So here we go, the Gettysburg Campaign, Scenario 10, in the um, Roads to Gettysburg 2, Lee Strikes North. Let's give this a try. Okay, the Gettysburg Campaign begins on June the 22nd and will be ending about on July 9th at the maximum. Now at the start, there's not very many units on the board. These units here I have are just off to the side. They came on, come on later during the Union reinforcement phase. We've got some units here fortified just south of Frederick. Some cavalry units here near Harpers Ferry, that's this Harpers Ferry here, all fortified. The Confederates, Ewell's Corps is spread out between Sharpsburg here and over here at Funkstown. Yeah, with Jenkins Cavalry way up here at Middleburg. Now Lee and Longstreet themselves are at Williamsport, Maryland. But they're not allowed to move till turn four. And Hill's third corps is here at Shepherdstown. They can't move till turn three. Way off in the distance there, we've got some Union militia units guarding Harrisburg and the area around it. So the beginning of the campaign starts very low key with very few units. So I'll pick up the action after I've moved any Confederates and the Union, the first uh, action pulse. Well, well, we'll complete all the action pulses before uh, we do another video. So like I said, we'll be watching this in segments of one day each. Well, there wasn't much to do in that phase, so I had the Confederates and the Union just continually passing, except for Jenkins, who moved up to between Chambersburg and Greencastle. He just got a fatigue one, which is now removed. So maybe I'm just wasting time. I don't think so, though. 
since Lee Longstreet on the Third Corps can't move anyway, uh, I just passed. There's really nothing to do. The Union, they can't get any Army of the Potomac reinforcements until turn two, so they just passed too. So turn one was really nothing happening. We'll go on to turn two. Okay, this is the situation after June 24th, turn three. Not much happened. There was a lot of passing, certainly by the Union. There was really nothing for them to do. The Army of the Potomac, no units came on. And all that happened really was Ewell's Corps began marching north and Hill's Corps. This is after the fatigue markers have all been removed. I'm not letting any of the units get up past fatigue three. No use marching them to death. Jenkins still leading the way here. Didn't move him all the time. And there's this little pesky Union militia at Chambersburg, which I decided not to move. But maybe as Union, I'll back him up since he has no chance of stopping Ewell's Corps. That's the end of turn three. Okay, this is after turn four. We've got that... Uh, Union Militia Unit, trying to fall back before Ewell's Corps, Jenkins in the advance, and Hill's Corps coming up here. I didn't move Longstreet very far, because only one division could move, and so they moved to Hagerstown. I figured I might as well wait until he can put these guys in command control the next turn and move as a corps rather than as individual divisions. Union didn't do much. No units of the Army of the Potomac have appeared yet. Harper's Ferry all quiet. I haven't bothered to move those cavalry units. And way off in the distance near Harrisburg, though those units could move, there was very little point in moving them at this point. So that's the situation at the end of uh, turn four. Okay, this is the situation on June 26th after turn five. Now the Union did not get a very good roll for reinforcements. Let's look at the situation in the north first. Still didn't bother moving anybody up near Harrisburg. No point. They're already in forts and stuff. In the advance, Jenkins over here finally overtook this Union militia. Probably get in behind him. And when Ewell's Corps comes up and Hill, probably smash him to pieces, eliminate him. And uh, down here is Longstreet's Corps with Lee. And... Again, Harper's very quiet. Not much happening there. Now, set aside where the Union reinforcements are coming on, but um, they're going to be very late. Some are coming on next turn, and the turn after that, and the turn after that. So the Union will not even enter the board till uh, June 27th. So they're going to be behind schedule. Now, as compensation, the way the designer has done the scenario, the Confederates will be down 10 points. So we're not really simulating the campaign at Gettysburg now because Lee is much ahead of schedule and the Union are behind. They've stolen a march. So this game will be different than the actual historical campaign. Okay, this is the situation after June 27th, turn 6. The only exception to this video, this section, is that I've kept the fatigue markers on to show you at what level I'm uh, having the troops march. I'm not letting any of the corps go above fatigue three because they want to recuperate and not exhaust their men. Um, so we've got the um, third corps here, first corps and the 11th, and up in the lead over here is Kilpatrick's cavalry division. And Lee's army is making good headway in the north there. You can see the advance here under Hill now. And that's the second corps. And Lee has turned Longstreet's corps to the east, marching towards Gettysburg. Now, you might be wondering what these little orange markers are for. Well, they're just reminders for me that the orange are the counties that are worth points. And the white little crosses are to show what uh, town points I can accrue. So I'm playing a conservative game for both sides. Nobody's trying force marching or even extended marching. 
They're playing conservatively. Question now will be, can Lee bother Harrisburg, get some points, try to take over a county before the Union Army marches up? Much like the real situation, of course, except the Union are a little bit further behind because of the uh, late arrival. So that's it for June 27th. Okay, we had a situation here that was so interesting, I thought we should add it to the video. I'll do that from time to time instead of strictly following the uh, one-day routine. We're still on the June 28th turn, turn 7, but we had Kilpatrick's division here scouting out the roads west of Gettysburg. He was around here, and Longstreet's corps got a couple of back-to-back -back moves, and they pushed... Um, Kilpatrick's uh, division, Far under, well, Farnsworth's brigade, they did retreat before combat twice, fatiguing the cavalry very badly and pushing them back to just southeast of Gettysburg. Longstreet's on his way. He's certainly going to get to the town first. Custer's out of position because um, Longstreet got those back-to-back -back moves. So we've got an interesting situation in that it's almost like the Buford, Devon, and Gamble situation that happened in the historical battle on July 1st. But this is an entirely different ballgame because this is June 28th and we have a Confederate Corps getting to the Gettysburg Square long before any uh, Union Corps can come up. Union Corps, closest one here would be um, Third Corps at Kriegerstown. First Corps is way down here at Little Hunting Creek. Now to give you a relationship this is uh, where Emmitsburg is. So the Union are at least a day, maybe a day and a half behind where they were historically. So we are going to see a different situation here. I thought that was worth filming. Okay, this is the situation after all moves for June 28th and all the fatigue markers have been removed. And I'll probably zoom in on uh, certain areas of the board. Oh, this overall view pretty well tells you what has happened. So, it's a Confederate dream in one sense, in that Longstreet's Corps is now deployed south of Gettysburg. It's so unusual to see the Confederates on places like Little Round Top and in the Peach Orchard facing south. Ewell's Corps is following up, coming in behind Longstreet. So, the Confederates have managed to concentrate two corps in the Gettysburg vicinity. Now, way off up at Harrisburg, I've still got Hill's 3rd Corps, and I've got them in a position to attack these forts outside Harrisburg. I'm not sure if that's the right decision, because I've already perhaps made a mistake. Maybe Hill should have marched for Gettysburg right away. Now, the Union player was still way behind, but they are beginning to catch up now because we've got Sickles' 3rd Corps here at Emmitsburg and uh, Reynolds' 1st Corps here and Howard's 11th, Buford's Cavalry here. Now part of Kilpatrick, who had to delay Longstreet, got pretty fatigued there. Farnsworth is actually exhausted, so he's in not very good shape. And the rest of Gregg's division is coming up. 5th Corps here and... Um, Meade himself personally with the Artillery Reserve and the 12th Corps and the 2nd is still way behind. So, I don't know, let's say with, if I keep them going three pulses, these fellows could be up maybe here in another day. So, I don't think we'll have the big battle yet. Now, we've got some Confederate decisions here. One of Lee's plans that was never realized was that he would take the whole army of Northern Virginia and smash into each Union Corps as it came up. Of course, that never even came near to happening. I'm wondering if Lee shouldn't contemplate it now. But the Union are close enough now that I think the Confederates have got to consider concentrating for the big battle. And uh, as I think more about it, I think maybe Hill has made a mistake by lingering too long up here. So what I'm going to do is look at the county points, how I get 
these points and see if perhaps the Confederates can get some county points to offset the deficit in points that they've got. So I'll probably end this video here. I'll call it part one. And I don't know if I'm even going to go and do any more videos. This was just an experiment to see how the advanced game worked. And uh, I'm very pleased with it. I think by moving the men, you can get valid historical results here. It's a very good simulation of the Gettysburg campaign. So I'm not promising a part two, but um, I must admit, I'd like to find out what happens now too. Should the Union concentrate? I mean, they could go with what? One, two, maybe three cores against Confederate two cores, but first and 11th, they're not the strongest cores. And Sickles is only a two division core, so the Union just might have to wait till um, more core arrive in the Gettysburg vicinity. Interesting how the uh, game, no matter how big the map is, it does seem to center around Gettysburg. And you can see why. It's just natural. Most of the main roads lead there. So that's it for uh, part one of uh, Roads to Gettysburg, Scenario 10, the Gettysburg Campaign. Thank you for watching.